good evening everyone and welcome to race face spotlight today we're going to go from florida all the way up to the state of washington actually sonoma's washington where we find young race car driver haley constance haley how are you doing this evening i'm doing pretty good i wish i could be racing but overall i'm really good yeah you're with about 10 other thousand kids around the country that's just going crazy waiting to get back behind that race car so uh, it's been a little while since we talked to you on a spotlight interview. So what's been going on over the winter? Over the winter, I was racing dirt goat carts at Evergreen Indoor Arena. And I actually got second in the championships, which I was really happy about. But I think we could have done a little bit better, but we had to miss a couple of races. But I'm super happy with our performance this year in the goat carts. All right. Yeah, I've been following you on the indoor karting, and I saw you did, you had an amazing winter time so uh right now i guess you're like everybody else in the country are you doing virtual school yeah i've been doing virtual school right now and so how's that how what do you think about that is it something that you like are you just anxious to get back to school so you can get around your friends or how's that working out for you if i'm being honest i don't really like the virtual school because i'm more of a visual learner so it's a lot easier for me to learn with the teacher there and being in school because when i'm at home learning i tend to get distracted with everything else so i also really miss my friends so i wish we could just get back to school but i also like it because i can just get all my homework done in one day and then be able to work in the garage the rest of the week yeah speaking of the garage you've got a brand new garage that you guys are building a new race uh uh, a shop, I guess, for put your uh, late model in and some of your other cars. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I'm super excited for that to get done because we've always worked in our little garage and I have five people in my family, four who race. So as you can imagine, that's a lot of cars in a little space. So once we get it done, it's going to be easier to have my whole family go into the shop and be able to all work on our cars together. So I just wanted to do a quick tour of my shop. So the front door is just right over here. Back door right there. Um, over here, we're gonna put a lift for the late model and then late models and micro sprints and just set up stuff is gonna go right over here. Over here is gonna be a kitchenette area. So for late nights in the shop, we're gonna be able to cook over here, just make dinner and bathroom. And then over here, so you can see the garage door is a lot taller. So it's meant to be for an RV, but we don't have an RV yet. So we're probably just going to use this area for fabricating stuff. And it's going to be kind of our dirtier side. And that's just right next to your house, right? Yeah. Do you know how many square feet that is? Because it looks like it's pretty good size. It's 2,400 square feet. So yeah, it's pretty good size. Yeah, that's awesome. You're going to deck it all out with racing memorabilia and stuff like that and kind of make it like a <laughs> dad and daughter man cave. We can't call it a man <laughs> cave. It's going to be part of yours. But is that the plans? Yeah, because we're, we can finally get our trophies out of my mom's kitchen and get them into a new space because I'm sure she's going crazy with all the trophies in there. Ah, so there is something in it for mom. She gets to reclaim the kitchen. <laughs> So let's talk a little yep. bit about your 2019. What would you say some of the highlights were of last year? Um, a couple of my highlights would definitely be going to the Tulsa shootout, but I think my favorite highlight of 2019 was getting to go to the Junior Late Model Challenge Camp because that was an amazing opportunity and I got to learn a lot about branding and marketing and stuff I never really knew I had to do before. And also the Nate Clower Motorsports cars were incredible. And it was just an awesome chance to go. And what a lot of people may not know is you lost that championship by one point to Grant Thompson. So you beat everybody else there, the hundreds and hundreds of people that actually applied for the camp. You went there, you finished second, you lost it by one point. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I still got second in the, in the points or in the camp, but I think Grant did an awesome job. And if I were to lose anybody, he would be the person because he's also an awesome teammate on race face. And I'm super glad that I lost to him. 
Right. Well, I just think you did an amazing job there because I know that after we start tallying up things and, and you actually did better on track than any racer that was there. Did you know that? No, I didn't. That's crazy. Yeah, you scored the highest on track out of everybody. So Mike Nake really was impressed with what you did and so was Kenny Shepard. And it was a great time. It's, what, it's something that I'll look back and think, man, you know what, there was only the first camp. Hopefully we're going to get to do a second one here in September, but who knows, we may have to have a virtual camp. <laughs> Hopefully not. That would mean, I, I... Yeah, I hope so. I hope we don't have to do that either. Doing eye racing is one thing, but doing a virtual camp, I just can't see that working. But we're going to have to keep our options open. So yeah. let's talk a little bit about the 2020 season and what's that look like for you? Are there any tracks that you're really excited to be going to to race um, next year? Or this, I should say this year right now. I keep saying <laughs> next year to everybody because we're not racing, but we're almost getting ready to head into May. So it's definitely this year. Yeah, it's going to be really busy for me this year because I'm racing three cars, a late model, a micro sprint, and a junior Hornet. Um, I think my favorite or my track that I'm most excited to race at would be Wenatchee because that's always been my dad's favorite track to race at. So it's going to be awesome having him as a coach to help me with that. So three different cars. Let's talk about the three different cars a little bit. Um, you've been racing the Hornet for a while and you do really, really good with that. So a lot of the viewers may not know what a Hornet is. Can you, can you kind of tell them a little bit about that car? It's a four cylinder car and we drive around a fifth mile track and it's front wheel drive. Okay. So you're going from a Hornet that's front wheel drive, kind of low on horsepower, back to a late model, rear wheel drive and a lot of horsepower. How do you adjust to that? It's going to be a big adjustment going between the two, but you just have to get your mindset changed into one day you're driving the Hornet and then the next day you're driving the late model. You really have to change your mindset and be able to be mentally prepared to go in between the two. And then you're going to jump into a micro sprint and go out on the dirt. So that's a whole other adjustment. Yep. It's going to be crazy. I'm super excited to do it though. It's going to be a challenge. So out of the three, which one are you most looking forward to racing this year? I think I'm most looking forward to driving the late model because this is my first year in the late model and it's a lot different from whatever what I drove before. So I'm super excited for that. But I'm also really excited to get in the micro sprint again and kind of get some redemption this year. Because last year we didn't do the greatest and we weren't able to go to many races. So I'm super excited for all. All right, so I got to ask you this question. What kind of input do you get from other people when you tell them, because you're a female, that you're a race car driver? What is What kind of feedback do you get and what do people think about that? A lot of the time, the expression on their face is just their jaw kind of drops. And then the, obviously they have a ton of questions following. Like some people will think that maybe like I'm a target since I'm one of the only girls. But then I just think of it like I just want to inspire more girls to get out and race because when I first started I was one of the only girls racing and now there's becoming a lot more girls in the sport and I just want to keep empowering other women to be able to get in the sport and just race with me. Well you've been a great brand ambassador because how good you are and I, I'm sure that uh, you know as much as you like to beat the boys they don't like to be beat by you I'm sure. No. <laughs> so let me ask you a question all the different things that you've got going on in a race car, what does Haley do when you're not racing? Um, lately, I've been really getting into longboarding, which thankfully we haven't had any crashes yet because every time I do something that's not on the motor, I tend to get hurt for some reason. So <laughs> thankfully we haven't had any broken bones off of that yet, but I've been having fun with that. Okay, so I'm an old guy. You're gonna have to explain to me what lawn boarding is. Okay, so it's basically a skateboard, but it's just longer, and instead of doing like tricks on it, you just kind of cruise, I guess. It's kind of hard to explain, but... Okay, so I got you. You said a long board. Yeah, I thought you said board. like a lawn board. I'm <laughs> yeah. like, okay, I've never heard a lawn board. I can see you out there, you know, back <laughs> behind your house. 
shooting down this on like some surfboard on the grass. That's what I was thinking <laughs> you were talking about. <laughs> no. So I saw a video of you the other day uh, that you posted on your Facebook page, which was really cool about you in a, I guess you'd call it a silver lip or a, a, a crane type of deal that you were, I don't know, how, how high up in the air were you? I'm not sure how high, but I was taller than my house and my house is three stories. So pretty high and my dad was operating it. So I guess you could say I trust him a little bit. <laughs> I guess because it would have been like, oh, well, I think maybe it's time to eat lunch. I'll be back in about an hour. You guys just hang out up there. Yeah, that would have been scary. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, uh, I don't think you're scared of a lot of things. Now, if I remember correctly, you've got some pretty interesting pets, don't you? Yeah, I have four pets. We just got two new cats, and I also have a dog. It's a silver lab. And he's three years old. And then I have a ball python snake. A python snake. Yes. So you may not know it, but the producer of our show just gave me a weird look and left the room. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people don't like snakes, but. So how did you come about getting a python for a snake? And how big is, is it a he or a she? It's a boy. I mean, we think it's a boy. We never really knew because it's hard to tell with snakes if it's a boy or a girl, but it's 14 feet, I believe. But <laughs> yeah. 14 feet long? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I could see it when you start dating or something. I could see your dad answering the door with that snake wrapped around him going, yes, you're here for what? Yeah, we got the snake when I, I think I was three years old. So it, my brother was the one who got it and was interested in getting a snake. And I was the one when my brother was gone because he's my stepbrother, so he switches between houses. So when he was gone, I was the one who had to feed the snake because my mom was too scared to. So we would feed him <laughs> little mouses and I'd have to put it in the cage, so yeah. <laughs> I was just gonna ask you, what do you feed a 14 foot python and how does he get along with the other pets? Um, he just stays in the cage most of the time because everybody's pretty much afraid of him except like me and my dad and my brother. So, yeah. I, I tell you, if I ever come to visit, I'm probably going to be on the side of the fence that's afraid of it. That's, that's a big snake. I mean, we live here in Florida and we get snakes, you know, out in the yard all the time. And uh, I tell you, there's very few that escape alive because I'm thinking the only one good snake that I know of is one that's not moving anymore. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're just about out, out of time. So I really appreciate you being with us tonight. Uh, do you want to give a shout out to some of your sponsors? Yeah, I'd like to thank Dion Inc. for my incredible graphics on all of my cars, Joe's Racing Products, Joe's Speed Shop, MyTrackMan.net, John Somm, Oberg Filters, and just a huge thanks to my family and all my supporters. Well, Haley, thanks a lot for being with us. And for all of you out there that want to keep up to speed with Haley, you can check her out at HaleyConstanceRacing.com. If you're there, you can follow her on all of her social media platters, platforms, platters. I'm thinking about feeding that snake, man. It's in, stuck in my head. So check her out on all of her social <laughs> media platforms at Facebook, Instagram, and don't forget to subscribe to her newsletter, the new digital newsletter. Again, Haley, thanks for being with us. We'll look forward to connecting with you a little bit later this year, and hopefully you'll get some time back behind that race car. And for all of you out there, if you've missed any of our episodes, you can catch up on demand at raceface.tv. Until next time, my name's Rod Wortham. Thanks for watching.